Today we're going to create an aggressive shake effect, also known as hard shake. So let's take a look at what we're about to create. These aren't like the normal shakes we usually use in AMVs. These shakes are really intense, fast, and blurry, which makes them look cooler. So let's get started. As you can see, I've added three clips here. The first clip is one second long, and the rest are 15 frames, but you might want to adjust them according to your music. You can use the current resolution for this, but since these types of effects are popular in a square resolution, I will change it. Just click on this settings icon and change the width to 1080. You can also change the frame rate to 60, but make sure to do this before you import any clips. Once done, click on save. As you can see, we've got some problems here. The clip isn't filling the viewer. To fix that, just select all the clips and change the zoom to something like two. Now click on each clip and adjust the zoom accordingly. I will change the X offset a little as well. Just do this for all the clips and adjust them properly. Once done, right click on the first clip and click on new compound clip. Rename it as you want and repeat this for each clip. All right, now move your playhead on top of the first clip and click on the fusion page icon. The first thing we're going to do is make a simple zoom in transition. For that, click on the media in node and add a transform node. Press F2 and rename it as zoom. Go to frame zero and add a keyframe for size. Now go to the last frame and change the size to 1.25. And here we go, but we need to make it smoother. For that, click on the spline editor icon, tick size, then press the zoom to fit button. Select the keyframe and press S. Now if we play, we will get something like this. All right, now we will create a white flash effect. For that, click on the zoom node and add a brightness and contrast node. Go to the inspector window and change the brightness to something like 0.7. Now go to frame zero and add a keyframe. Then go to the last frame and change the value to zero. If we play, we will see that this doesn't actually look like a flash. It's way too slow. To fix that, go to the spline editor, double click to deselect zoom, and select this one. Press S and try to replicate the same curve as me, make sure both are close to each other. Now it looks better. All right, now click on the brightness node, then add a directional blur. Head over to the inspector window. The first thing we're gonna do is change the length to 0.6. Next, adjust the angle to minus 90 to create a vertical blur effect. Move to frame 0 and add a keyframe for the length. Now go to frame 7. Remember, since my clip is 30 frames long, we're going to frame 7, which is one fourth of the total frames. If your clip is 60 frames, you would go to frame 14. If it's 15 frames, you would go to frame 4. All right, on frame 7, change the length to 0. Now open the spline editor and create a curve similar to mine. This is how it should look. Moving on, Go to frame 22 and add a keyframe. Then go to the last frame and change the value to 0.6. Create a curve similar to the one shown. And there you have it. Our blur effect is complete. All right, click here and add a camera shake node. We want the shake at the beginning and end only. So head over to the inspector window. First change the edges to mirror. Now go to frame zero and add a keyframe for the overall strength. Move to frame seven and change the value to zero. If we play it back, we'll get something like this. Also adjust the speed to 0.9 for a slightly faster effect. Now open the spline editor and create a curve similar to mine. Keep it a bit flat like this. All right, this is what we have so far. Now move to frame 22 and add a keyframe. Then go to the last frame and change the value to one. Create a curve similar to this one for a smooth transition. And here we have it. Next, let's add some flicker to enhance the effect. Click on the camera shake node and search for the flicker edition. By default, it's white flicker, but we want black. Head to the inspector and change the flicker type to vignette. However, it may be too intense, so adjust the range to around 0.35 for a better look. And this looks way better now. All right, now we have shake in the beginning and end, but we want it in the overall clip as well. So add another camera shake node, but it's way too high right now. First change the edges to mirror, then adjust the overall strength to 0.4 and speed to 0.45. Let's play it. This looks good, but we have some problems as you can see some of the tiles are visible here and here. To fix it, just add a transform node and increase the size slightly. And we have everything we needed. 
so let's add some finishing touches to it. First, add an optical flow node to make the animation smoother. Then add vector motion blur. You can adjust the scale to around 2 or 3, but since I am recording, I will keep it as it is. And with motion blur, our animation looks like this. Alright, now select all these nodes from zoom to motion blur and press Ctrl plus G to make a group. You can rename it as aggressive shake. After that, just copy it by pressing Ctrl plus C. Then go to the edit page, move your playhead to the second clip, and open Fusion. Here, just paste it, press Shift, and drag it to the node line. Wait a minute, let me turn off motion blur and optical flow for now. Otherwise, it won't preview. Now this clip is 15 frames long, so naturally, we need to adjust keyframes to view the full animation. Click on this icon called Keyframes, then first enable Aggressive Shake, and then Zoom. Click on the Zoom to Fit button, and drag the last keyframe to the end of this zoom effect. Now disable Zoom and enable Brightness. Do the same for this one as well. For the directional blur, put the playhead to frame 4 and drag the second keyframe. Then drag the third one to frame 10, and now bring the last keyframe to the end of clip. Process is same for camera shake as well. Also, if you want to know more about this, check out the tutorial added to the i button. Once you are done, you will get something that looks cool. Now I will just copy this and paste it to the rest of the clips since they are the same. This is our final result. You can do color correction and more to make it look even better, but I will stop here. Don't forget to like and ask anything you need in the comments.